Jeremy Cook here for Hackster.io. Recently, Qualcomm acquired open source hardware maker Arduino for an undisclosed sum. To cement this cordial relationship, they're making a brand new board in the Arduino Uno form factor called the Uno Q. It uses Qualcomm's Dragonwing QRB2210 microprocessor along with an STM32U585 microcontroller plus a wide range of other onboard electronics. In theory, this device is a hacking and development powerhouse, but how does it work in the real world? Follow along to see my unboxing and early usage of the brand new Arduino Uno Q. So first set of good news, actually, um, the socks actually fit me. So, you know, it's good because, you know, here in Florida, it's getting towards winter and um, it's gonna get down to the 60s or so. So gotta keep my toes from freezing, right? They're pretty nice socks though. I, I don't know if they sell these or, you know, or what. So, and and thanks to Arduino and Haxer for that. Pretty cool. Actually, this is pretty funny. It's uh, Arduino MKR foot shield. It's five times toe connectors per device, elasticated ankle port, adjustable form factor, full stepper control, Circuit pathway connect connectivity supplied as a Darlington pair compatible with most retro incubulators and no soldering required because you know you don't want to solder on your feet. Anyway, uh, this is not what I'm reviewing today, but um, socks are pretty cool. My instinct and probably what I would normally do is look this up on the computer and you know try to plug it in there, maybe with Arduino IDE, but it says plug scan and go, so why don't we try that? So I'll plug it in. Ooh. It's kind of cool, nice like snake game or something, or at least snake pattern. Plug, scan. So I'll scan with the phone, scan that. All right, welcome to Arduino Q. Okay, open the page on your computer to download Arduino App Lab. All right, so I guess you are supposed to go on the computer. Yeah, so I've got a little uh, little research to do, but hopefully I'll be able to do something, something awesome with this. So looking at this, um, just one note, I don't think this is a reset button, at least not in the same way that it is in the Arduino Uno, or I think it just actually resets the processor. Um, I believe it just resets the processor. Um, this doesn't seem to, at least it doesn't, at least it doesn't reset whatever is running the hard thing. So a lot of stuff on here, a lot of stuff to explore. All right. So first of all, I thought I'd put this up, uh, plug it in my computer. It's a, it's an old Intel Mac, uh, not, not that old, but you know, maybe four years old, kind of the last of the Intel Macs. Um, so I'll plug it into my computer here, USB-C, which is nice. And you see it boots up just does the thing there. Now, I, I saw somewhere that apparently the microcontroller boots up after the Linux portion, so I don't really know how it's doing that. I guess the Linux uh, portion is doing that somehow. Anyway, um, we'll let that boot up. But while, while I'm doing that, I need to download the Arduino um, App Lab, their new their new IDE, I, I guess it's called. Um, download that and then we'll, we'll uh, kind of go from there. Now, I've done this before. I've actually programmed it earlier, but you know, I'll kind of try to reprogram it to kind of go through the through the steps. So Arduino oh, App Lab. So look that up, App Lab. Got that here. Go ahead and download it. Download it for Mac OS. So it should be good. Download that. Download that to the desktop. DMG file, which I always think stands for damage, but I don't think that's, uh, I think it's disk image. <laughs> so, all right, so. Standard install process, App Lab goes to there. Now we'll boot that up, but before we do that, I thought I'd go ahead and uh, download the Flasher CLI. Now I thought this was kind of kind of weird because I did this when I did this earlier. If you look at this, you got uh, Mac OS, Mac OS ARM 64 or Mac OS X86 8 <laughs> 64. But so actually, when I did it before, crazily enough, it said um, it said AMD, which I thought was kind of weird. So I guess, I guess they changed that, so that's good. Before it had Flasher Tool Mac OS AMD download. So that's interesting. I guess they um, actually looked at what I was looking at and, and uh, changed it. So, you know, that kind of goes back to something I kind of thought about when I was doing this. You know, it's almost in a kind of an unfinished format, but we'll get into that in a little bit. But but yeah, they had this AMD download, but I guess they changed it. So, you know, the good thing is, even if, um, you know, as maybe we'll, maybe we'll see later, even if things seem a little bit undeveloped, they, um, yeah, they seem willing to change, so that's that's good. So hopefully this works because what I did before I downloaded the AMD version, which they mean x86. So go ahead and download that. We may not need it because I've already flashed it, but go ahead and download that to the desktop. There's some instructions for that. You know, you go through the how to use guide, and I won't go through that right now. But basically, you've got to go into the terminal. It's not that hard, but it's something that might be a barrier for somebody that's you know 
very new to this and just getting into Arduino, you know, you're trying to flash blink at LED and you know, you're having to go into the terminal and stuff and that might be a, might be a problem. But um, anyway, at least now it, oh, you also have to put a jumper on there between the, the pins uh, here and here. So anyway, it's not that big of a deal, but it might be a bit of a, uh, you know, hurdle for somebody just, you know, oh, I wanna, I got an Arduino and a bleak at LED. That might be a, might be an issue. Should be able to open up the App Lab at this point and should, should come up. So App Lab is a scary app downloaded from the internet. So you wanna open it? Yeah, let's go and open it. I'm not sure how many people that actually, you know, saves from danger doing that. So Arduino Uno Q, I already, already named it as Nita. And as I saw before, it's actually popped up free before. So I guess we'll do it over USB. Why not? So generally when you, you start this off, you have to name it, put in your Wi-Fi credentials, etc. If you don't want to go over Wi-Fi, I, I don't know if there's a way to get around that. There probably is. But let's just say you want to blink an LED, blink LED with your user interface UI right here. So that seems the closest to a, you know, a blink sketch that you can do. So even though it'd be nice if you had an actual blink sketch on here. Anyway, let's do the blink with UI, which in theory, you know, since you have your Wi-Fi information in, it'll pop up web page and you can blink the blink the LED. So let's go ahead and click on that. The Linux blink example shows a simple Linux application that changes LED state on the board. It showcases the basic event handling and UI through a web-based interface. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and run. I, I think I did this before, so I don't know if it's been loaded on or, or what. And if I remember right correctly from last time, this took a long time to boot up. Editor. So what you do, you open the app in your browser once it's running at, at this address. Uh, colon 7,000. So Nita, Nita.lan. So maybe that'll that'll work if I just did that. So Nita.lan colon 7,000. Okay, good. Cool. LED is off. Now, when I did this before, when I clicked on it, it didn't really do anything. It just stayed off. But maybe it'll be different now that I'm rerunning it. So LED is on. LED is off. All right, so this is working now. Supposedly, you can also program this using the Arduino IDE. So I guess I'll try that as well. I think you've got to load up all your, your stuff, you know, all your libraries and such, but you know, at least I've got this running, you know, it did take quite a bit of updating yesterday, you know, as far as Arduino Flasher CLI, I did update that and it's just different things. So, you know, there's still some stuff to, stuff to jump through to begin with, but I do have it running at least that little blink sketch. So, so that's neat. You know, from here, maybe I'll try it in the Arduino IDE, how to modify it from that. And then I'll try out their actual desktop to see what, what happens with that too. See, um, you know, if it can run like a, like a Raspberry Pi, actually, actually having controlling its own screen and stuff. So this device, if you plug it into the appropriate um, uh, USB splitter, USB hub, hub, I guess, supposedly it will run an actual desktop. I think it's um, uh, Debian, I believe. I'm, I'm not sure about that, but anyway, it's got to have uh, actual power input. So I've got USB power in here. Uh, this will plug into the um, Arduino Uno Q. Uno Q. Um, and then you've got this that goes to your keyboard, uh, mouse, got to plug that in. And then you need an HDMI connector that goes to the actual monitor. This looks a little gratuitous. It's just what I had available. Same with the keyboard. It just kind of has a, use the keycaps for some other stuff, but should work for, for my basic functionality here. At least, at least most of it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Now I have programmed this with the App Lab and the, uh, the Flasher, um, as I guess we just saw. Um, I have not programmed it with the Arduino ID, like the older older one, so I don't know if that would change something or what, but decided to go ahead and just do this before I, I mess with that at all. So I'll go ahead and plug it in and we'll see what happens. So nothing yet. So I wonder if this is actually supposed to be plugged into power and then this is supposed to be going to the, the thing. I'm not sure though. So doing a little initial troubleshooting here, I went ahead and plugged this in straight to power and you can see it gets power here. So probably have to reverse this somehow, but um, yeah, I need to figure out a cable to go, go which way. So I guess this needs to be plugged into here and then this into power, but I'm not sure about that. All right, so I'm gonna get power through this. This is a USB-C female, USB-A female to USB-C female. I don't know that that's the best way to do it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but I'm not gonna be using a whole lot of power, hopefully. And then I'll use this, this cable, go to the, the Uno Q, put that in there. Hopefully that'll give it power. And also get a reading on this from the, from the side, 
this sure should show me how much power I'm using. So I'll put the power in this way and see if that, if that gives me power. Okay, that's a good, good sign. So it's using one watt and then two watts. So it's doing something. All right, so looking at this, actually this, this port here, it says PD. So I think this is power delivery. Um, and this one, I guess it's just some other sort of port. So I think if I plug this in here and actually I did it just a minute ago, um, if I plug this in here, it will actually boot up and go to the HDMI screen. So, you know, with this sort of hub, you've got to make sure everything's correct. So perhaps at some point they'll have some sort of carrier board that, you know, maybe you just plug it in and it works as a desktop easily. It's okay, but it's not ideal, obviously. So let's go ahead and plug this in and see what happens. So just one USB-C port, you know, more ports like a Raspberry Pi. In some ways that would make this a lot easier, but you know, that you, you make selections with trade-offs and that's that's how it is, I guess. So plug that in and you see it start to boot up. So I, as far as I know, there's no way, I don't know how to shut it down safely. So, um, oh, that's good. And yeah, that was kind of cool. It, it's the lights, the lights go do something on there and it's um, booting up, so that's good. From there, you have to log in and, and it says um, Arduino. Now I set this, I set my username and password as Arduino and Arduino before in the uh, the desktop when I was playing with the um, the app, app Lab, I guess. So hopefully that's the same, so Arduino. And here we go, goes right into the App Lab. Rodina, okay, I'll, it'll be, so the board's name will be Rodina now and it, keyboard layout English. So it's telling me it's an update is required to the App Lab, which I just uh, just flashed a new version of the firmware on here, so that's kind of strange. I actually got this the first time I tried it on the desktop, uh, said some sort of update was required. Had to update a few times and then it eventually worked. It was a little bit, seemed a little bit um, buggy, I don't know. And anyway, it did, it did work eventually, but we'll see if it works better when I'm doing it on the desktop. So download an update. So yeah, this could take a while. So after trying the Arduino Q in the App Lab, as well as uh, just as a desktop, standalone desktop, I'm gonna try programming it with the Arduino IDE. So I'll go ahead and plug it in here, like so. So it's connected via USB-C to my computer, uh, which is a, an Intel Mac for those that want to know. On here, if you look up uh, Arduino Q, Q, um, comes up, so I assume you have to install the board package, so we'll just go ahead and do that. This is actually the first time I've done this, so I guess you're kind of kind of seeing it live or semi-live. So with that installed, let's, uh, let's see if we can run like a blink sketch. So it's like the Arduino Uno Q. Let's go ahead and go file, examples, basics, blink, pops up. In theory, this should work, but we'll see. I'm not gonna go much further than this, but we'll just go ahead and upload it and see what happens. So find the sketch huh, look at that it just kind of just kind of works so let's just see if I can modify it and I actually didn't take too long to um, go through it so that's that's actually a good thing I think now I mean if you're just using it blink an LED then you know you probably shouldn't be using this board but it's still nice that it actually does compile and send to it pretty pretty quickly compiling appears to be blinking a little bit faster so let's go, go ahead and make it even faster 100 100 millisecond delay between going on and going off Yep, blinking very fast. So, so that, that's great. I mean, as far as um, you know, using it for basic Arduino functions on the Arduino ID, it appears to work quite well. Now, that being said, if you know we're just blinking an LED, so yeah, the um, a traditional Arduino Uno might be a better selection, or even an AT Tiny, or or I guess you could just use a 555 as 555 as people people like to say. Hopefully, it'll work on the desktop as well. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll go and check that, you know, and we'll just see what happens. So good news, even after programming it in the RG window IDE, it still uh, still seems to work. Okay, it goes uh, straight into the App Lab on the desktop version. Um, still still blinking, so I guess that's good. I don't know what what's going on there exactly. Actually, I wonder if um, I do the blink LED example here. I wonder what happens. So I'll go ahead and run that. So I was able to program it. It worked okay. It's, it's actually blinking, you know, once per second. It looks like so. So yeah, that works even after programming it in the Arduino IDE. So that's yeah, it's kind of cool. You got several three different options for this. R really, I mean, you know, de desktop on your computer, the actual OS here, and then um, then via the Arduino IDE. So as there's a lot lot to take in. I think that's. Uh, you know, a pro and a con, you're probably, probably nobody's gonna use all the tools available to, to somebody. 
but there's a lot available here. So it's, um, yeah, that's, that's a good, that's a good and a bad thing. I, you know, it's nice with something like an Arduino Uno, you know, you could pretty much, pretty much know what's on here. I mean, you might not know everything about the microcontroller or, or anything else, but, um, you know, simple enough, you can kind of control your design and then, you know, in theory, you move this dev board, development board to a production board. Now, if you're a larger company, you know, maybe, maybe you have enough personnel to understand all of it and you can move whatever portion you've used here to your, you know, from a dev development board to a production board later. Um, also, you know, there's obviously some educational possibilities for this, you know, as far as like, you know, plugging it in, um, you know, it'd be nice if you got some sort of carrier board for this that took care of all this, all this stuff here for you. So, but, but then, you know, you've also got the possibility of Raspberry Pi and, you know, even, even plugging an Arduino Uno onto that, you know, on, you know, in your system, or you can use shields on this. Uh, there's all kinds of possibilities. I think, um, it might, may or may not be the right one for you but could be the right one for somebody. Also, I should note the program in here after I did it on Arduino C and it really didn't take too long to get the, the program onto it. So maybe maybe that's not as much of a barrier as I initially thought. But, but again, somebody would probably need to do some more experimentation on this and a bit more learning to understand all its capabilities. As outlined in the Hexer write-up, my initial experience with the Arduino Uno Q wasn't entirely smooth. And one might argue you can get similar functionality out of other devices with less complication. At the same time, the possibilities for how it could be used are virtually limitless. And interacting with it as a desktop computer would seem especially helpful for educators. So who knows what will happen with the board in the future? Perhaps it'll be Corduino's bread and butter dev board for the next decade. Or maybe it's a stepping stone to something even better. Either way, it'll be fun to see what happens next. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy Cook for Hackster.io, signing off.